At the Proven Grounds 2, we trapped 139 raccoons, possums, and skunks during the 2022-2023 trapping season. That turns out to be a predator for about every six acres that we removed. Let 139, or a predator for about every six acres, sink in while you're considering that if a hen lays 10 eggs a day, that first egg, of course, been on the ground 10 days, and she starts to incubate, she'll incubate, set on that nest, most hours out of the day, for about 28 days. And then the poults, once they hatch, they're about 14 days old before they can fly up to a limb, before they get off the ground at night. That's 52 days on the ground. If you've ever hunted behind a good dog, rabbit hunting, quail hunting, pheasant hunting, you watch those dogs pick up the scent, now they're not going to nest, but pick up the scent of those prey species very effectively over and over and over. Most of those dogs, not all, but most of them are on welfare. They get puppy chow whether they hunt or not. Now let's take that old raccoon out there. He either finds, kills, and eats, or starves and dies. I would say that's really, really good training. In fact, I would say just based on that, that a raccoon is probably better than the average hunting dog at finding their prey, in this case, a turkey nest. And, and by the way, there's a lot of research on raccoons getting in a songbird nest. How much damage are we doing to our songbird populations by not managing raccoon populations? It's widely researched and published that the two biggest causes of turkey nest predation or pulp predation, well, those are related to predators and habitat quality. There's kind of a continuum there. If you think about, you know, a poultry house, uh, you know, a Tyson chicken or somebody's poultry house out there, and there's 10, 20, 30,000 critters in there, well, some of them die due to fighting or getting trampled or whatever, but the vast majority of them survive and there's zero predators in there, and that's because, of course, they're fed and watered and, you know, in a great environment. Let's go to the other side of that spectrum. If we're on a stuff mart parking lot, turkey wouldn't have much of a chance of surviving the night. That would be a zero habitat. And the poultry house is awesome habitat. It's built and created to be the right temperature and all that stuff. Most of us are in the middle somewhere, right? We're not a stuff mart parking lot, and we're certainly not up hunting in a poultry house, although I'm going to bet that my Longbeard XRs would take out a whole bunch of turkeys with one shot in there. I wouldn't want to clean that many. Most of us are in the middle. Where's your property? How, you know, what's it like where you hunt? Public land, private land? How's that habitat? Is there good cover knee high? Is you see in Coonscat on every road you walk down? Let's dive into that a bit more. I've shared that raccoons are top turkey nest predators. In fact, research paper after research paper shows that they're the number one predator of turkey nest. Now let's think about what's going on in my home state of Missouri, because the Missouri Department of Conservation does a great job, I'm gonna say a way better than average job, of collecting data on a lot of critters. They manage by science, I'm very proud of them. So they have a lot of data showing that, of course the turkey harvest has been declining it's roughly about half of what it was during the peak. Now, there's a lot of factors there, but they also have a lot of data showing the number of raccoons increasing. I wanna dive into that a bit more. Missouri's a pretty large state, geographically speaking. Last data I found at the big auction here in Missouri, about a thousand, a little bit over a thousand raccoon pelts were sold. Let me put that number in scale. The amount of pelts sold in 2021, you know, based on that data, it's probably off a little bit. It's about an 80% decrease compared to the fur auctions in Missouri. We're talking Missouri data here. During 2012, 2013, 80% decrease. And you got to remember those raccoons that weren't trapped probably reproduced. Some of them didn't make it to the second reproductive age, but a lot of them lived and reproduced. So that population is multiplying exponentially, not linearly, not one on the other. When you don't remove raccoons and there's plenty of food and plenty of habitat for them, those populations can really grow rapidly. It's worth sharing, again, using data from the great state of Missouri, that when we look at raccoon pelts sold or fur prices, 
and we look at turkey harvest number during the legal seasons, they pretty closely match each other. It's not an exact match, and you might even think there might be a bit of lag in there, but when we were trapping a whole lot more raccoons or selling more pelts, we were harvesting more turkeys. And when we weren't harvesting very many raccoons, we weren't harvesting very many turkeys. This does not show cause and effect, but I think it makes a lot of bells go off in a thinking man's head when they look at these numbers. There's data from 1977, again from the Missouri Department of Conservation, from their scent station work. And a scent station is simply making an area and putting sand or something down that shows tracks really easily, and then putting a lure or a scent in there, much like a trapper would use, and going daily each morning, seeing what tracks are showing up, raccoon, possum, fox, whatever, smoothing that out and going back the next day and checking. So a really great data set. And from 1977 to now, based on those tracks, that estimates the raccoon population has increased more than 300%. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. With all these predators out there, certainly really high quality habitat can help turkey populations, nesting and brooding habitat specifically. A lot of people focus on fall birds, but Man, it's reproduction that drives a turkey population. We need those eggs and poach to survive. Once they get past that stage, they're pretty good at avoiding predators and they can eat on insects or out of crop fields or food plots. But those first few weeks, that's critical to turkey populations. The quality of the habitat has a lot to do with the survival of eggs or poach during those first few weeks. And that good quality habitat, well, that's well researched. We know we need it pretty thick and a foot or two tall. These are general terms for nesting. Still tall, about the same height, but a little more open for those little poults to go around. A brand new turkey poult, it's not very big at all. If it's trying to walk through a thick fescue pasture or something, it's not gonna make it. Little bitty short legs on those brand new turkey poults. And they need a lot of insects to eat. If the sun's just smashing the ground or it's deep leaf litter, a, those poults aren't going through and it doesn't have the insect quantity like, you know, a little bit of bare ground shaded by a tuff, a native grass or a ragweed or a forb or something. But even with quality habitat, I contend that predators are still an issue. I have pitched a tennis ball many times for my wife's dog, Everest, in thick cover crops, you know, chin tall on me. Dog goes in, finds it, comes right out. No, it's trained to find a tennis ball, but I want to remind you that raccoons don't have any puppy welfare, right? They're not lodging at the foot of your bed every night. They're out there trying to make a living and they perfect their skills or they don't survive at finding prey. I got some friends that really enjoy turkey hunting and manage for turkeys really intensely. They manage that nesting and brooding habitat and then as a result of doing that a few years, they see, hear, and tag a lot of toms. I got some buddies that add trapping to that mix. When you go there, you see and hear a lot of toms. There's no doubt that removing predators and knowing that magic threshold, is it one predator for 100 acres, 10 predators for 100 acres? How many predators do we have to remove to have an impact on prey species? Well, I'm not aware of that number. I'm looking really excited to here at the Proving Grounds too, again to you know June, July, August when those poults are big enough to move around and seeing what we see when we're out working on the property and what our moultries pick up. If you'd like to learn more about our techniques, we have partnered with Turkeys for Tomorrow. They're doing some great research, by the way. If you're not familiar with them, look them up. They publish their research and the results online. It is fascinating. We're partnering with them for our field day coming up June 9th and 10th. Of course, we're talk deer, we're talk turkeys, we're talk habitat. We will have some trapping demonstrations. We'll show you exactly how to use our simple Duke cage traps and dog proof traps, 
how did we achieve removing the predator for every six acres with not that much work? We're gonna show you our techniques. I'm gonna say one last thing. I just already know it, man. When you talk about this, especially predators, boy, big furry, brown-eyed critters, I'm gonna get some hate mail. I'm gonna get it, I already know it. And that's okay, I've learned there's a lot of keyboard cowboys out there. You know who I really like learning from? And I try to respond to almost all those unless they're just too crude. But man, I love meeting a practitioner. You know that old calloused hand guy or gal that's been out there doing it? They probably don't sit behind their keyboard that much. They've been doing it for a while. You kind of got to nudge them a little bit to get them to talk or maybe share their techniques with you. Those practitioners are a wealth of information and I encourage you to find someone that's having success and something you want to be part of and learning from them. You know, learning turkey habitat and insects that poultry and that whole life cycle of turkeys, that's a great way to enjoy creation. And even more importantly, is seeking the Creator's will for your life and applying it daily. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.